Hello, my name is David Dungate. We are here live from Immerse Global Summit in the beautiful Madeira. I'm with Jason from Lenovo Think Reality. Welcome to the show, Jason. How are you? Excellent. Thanks, David. Fantastic. Well, you've got some really exciting news just fresh off stage. Uh, take us through the, the new launch, the VRX, and what that means for the enterprise market. Absolutely. So uh, we just announced the Lenovo Think Reality VRX. And uh, that is a uh, VR headset, six staff, all in one, targeted specifically for enterprise customers. Um, we've been working on this for quite some time, and we're excited to bring it out to the audience and be able to share it and be able to talk about it openly. Um, we're actively looking for people to jump on, talk to us about being customers, but also developers, and opening this up to the community to make sure that uh, we have the ultimate level of support for customers to walk in and begin exploring the enterprise metaverse. Fantastic. Um, I'm really fascinated by use cases in this area. Uh, sometimes the hype can overshadow the actual uh, live today use cases. Um, tell me about some of those uh, sectors, some of those businesses that you're really excited about targeting with the new headset. Well, for sure. And uh, you, you, you nailed it. There's a lot of hype right now about this. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things you really have to cut through the chaff and say what is real and what's not. And uh, we look at real world use cases for today. So things like reskilling employees, uh, giving them uh, better soft skill training, remote collaboration, being able to connect people that are working at home with people that are working in the office. Um, we really are contending, especially with this device, with the, the uh, hybrid workforce. So because of the coronavirus, we recognize that it's displaced a lot of people and we started to turn to technology. Uh, but there's a lacking by just using Teams and Zoom every day. So getting people more connected, having more organic events happen, really spurs creativity, helps people keep engaged with their jobs. And that's the area that we're really focusing a lot of attention on. And as we develop that, you know, we, we're using proven methodologies that are already out there to reskill people, to actually get them hands on. And we've been using, using um, flight simulators for decades. And we consider this the any job simula simulator. You can create any simulation with VR and immersive technology and get people up and running in safe, repeatable environments. And those are the areas we're looking at, as well as bringing people together to train together and learn together, as well as you know, develop more creative ideas together. And that's, that's the heart of it. Tell me about the, the form factor. Right? We've seen a lot of uh, devices out on the market now. Um, how has Lenovo really taken that form factor to a, a new level, if you like, and um, how is that going to help those enterprise customers? Well, absolutely. I think as we, as we look at the market with VR devices and, and AR devices, and any of our technology, really, we're always looking to get smaller, faster, better. You know? And uh, really, with, with VR technology, the smaller portion comes with just the comfort of using the device, as well as some of the, the bizarre nature of putting on this, this big box on your head. You know? So the more we could drive that down and the more we can make it more compact, the easier it is for people to adopt. Uh, the longer you could wear it, the more comfortable you're wearing it, uh, the more comfortable you're even being seen wearing it. Um, so there's all those factors we look at. And, and even something as simple as the, the way we've designed this is you know, through a bunch of UX studies, we're making sure that it's comfortable to wear for majority of people without the top strap. And it sounds silly, but a lot of people don't want to put it on because it may mess up their hair or it may, you know, may make them feel more self-conscious when they're wearing the device. Um, we also made sure that we're not using any foam or fabric on the device, fully wipeable because we're conscientious about people, you know, spreading germs if they're sharing the headset. Um, you know, we, we looked at every aspect of the design to make sure that as it's being built out and as we're bringing it to market, people can feel comfortable utilizing it and sharing it with others. Um, and that smaller form factor is, is, a, is a huge key. Uh, it's, it's beautifully balanced front to back. Uh, we've got this, this heavy duty battery that's in the back that really you know, offsets that balance in the front. And it just makes it easier to wear. People just pop it on and pop it right off. Um, and that's the other factor about these, the lens type. Because it allows for the smaller form factor, that's usually what people notice first. But because of the edge to edge clarity on the glass, rather than it being the traditional Fresnel lens type, you get a much bigger sweet spot. So traditional VR headset, you pop that device on and you're sitting there fussing with making sure you've got that correct image. And that's fine for you or I, who may have tried on hundreds of different types of devices at this point. But what about the person that's trying VR for the first time? They may not realize, oh, I can actually have a better experience if I get it in the right spot. They just say, oh, well, I guess this is as clear as it can get. 
So we want to give them that easy out of the box. You pop it on and you get great imagery and a smaller form factor right away. And that's that's why we made those design choices up front. I want to pick up on, on one phrase that came through with the news today, and that is uh, the on-ramp to the metaverse. Uh, everyone's talking about the metaverse right now. Um, tell us, you know, what, is, what does that mean? How are you um, bringing the metaverse to the, to the enterprise uh, customers? Well, the, the, the on-ramp is really where it is because we're, we're just getting started with anything we're working in the metaverse. And I, I spoke about this a bit, but we have that analog with the internet, where we were in that period of time. And early days internet, maybe five, six years in, uh, we still had a lot of doubters and we still had a lot of people trying to figure out what they could do with the technology. And that's the same spot we're in with the metaverse right now. We'll get to a point where it's ubiquitous and everyone can look back and say, I don't know how I live without this. But right now we're still trying to figure out how we get people on. And that for us is through giving people an actual active use case that they can look at. So uh, Amy Peck brought up uh, Accenture and their deployment for onboarding employees using VR. Now, that's an amazing use case where they no longer take people from a location and bring them to an actual onboarding facility, Re reducing travel costs, reducing waste, actually giving people a reskilling tool that they can have in their homes is amazingly valuable for organizations. And that's money that they could be saving and real results that they could see today. Of course, the, the $1 billion saved by Amazon is another part of your, your speech as well. And imagine that money reinvested in this kind of tech. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? Absolutely. And that's, that was one company, one metric. 2020, a $1 billion saved on travel costs alone. You extrapolate that out to every company in the world. You take it to all the other areas that they're able to save money. And you have a, a massive fortune that can be then reinvested in areas to make your company more money but also make people's lives more comfortable, meeting people where they stand, rather than saying, you have to come to the office or you have to perform this way. You, you, you go into this space and you say, immersive tech is only going to allow me to work the way I wanna work, rather than how I have to work or I was previously told I had to work. So there's a lot of opportunity there, we think. Fantastic. So uh, tell me, Jason, you know, there's a lot going on in a lot of different sectors. What's exciting uh, to you from you know, collaboration or a training point of view or maybe some other area? What, it, what really, uh, you know, are you excited about right now? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a, there's a term convergence we use with the web, and I think that's really where we're getting with, with immersive tech as well. And, you know, I think the convergence of AR and VR, especially around mixed reality and, and mixed reality cap capabilities on the Think Reality VRX is very important as far as you know, the way we see that, because it gives people a greater level of comfort. And the thing I'm most interested in is how we bring people that are on their phones, in VR headsets, in AR, and get them collaborating together in a place that feels organic. And, you know, with that, you know, the idea that people are going to become more and more comfortable seeing avatars of themselves, interacting with avatars through teams or through uh, interactive content. Um, you know, I think there's a great benefit from that. It makes people feel like they have that a little bit of that buffer so they can express themselves a little bit more. And, you know, as the technology improves and those avatars improve, we're going to have a lot more freedom of expression and uh, I think a, a lot greater ability to, to, uh, to collaborate openly. And, and I, I do think it's going to lead to a lot more engagement. So that's, I think, a little bit further down the road. I think we're seeing the early days of that still. Um, but I think from a collaboration perspective, when we get to that point, and I do see this within the next 10, 15 years, where having a conversation with another person feels almost as natural as having a conversation with an avatar. Um, you know, we, we do it today where we, we didn't think 10 years ago, we're gonna sit there on a Zoom call for all day or a Teams call all day. And I think that next graduation is going to be in a physical presence in a virtual space and, and having that interconnected world between the digital and physical. Fantastic. Well, Jason, um, that's all we've got time for, unfortunately. But uh, congratulations on the launch. The VRX available in early January 2023, early, I believe. Early 2023, Any, early 2023 yeah. not, not a month yet. Um, uh, good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And thank you for watching. You've been watching me, David Dungate, on XR Today.